Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Long Range 101, an introduction to long range. My name is David Brault, and together with Tom Cremieu, we're going to spend about the next 45 minutes walking you through the process of building a mobile application with long range. My goal here today is to bring everybody up to speed on long range so that you can walk away from today's webinar uh, feeling confident enough to use your own skills to build native mobile applications for both Apple and Android devices that are fully integrated with your IBM I data and your applications. Now, in order to accomplish this, we'll need to first review the architecture of a long range application and second, demonstrate several long range apps and then open up the hood, break down the RPG and DDS code so we can get a great idea of how all the moving pieces hang together. Then after our deep dive into long range, I'll tell you more about long range university. This is a great opportunity to get hands on with long range. And then we'll finish up with plenty of time for questions and answers. First off, let's talk about what is long range. So long range is the first and only IBM I mobile development tool that really enables RPG and COBOL programmers to build native mobile applications, not mobile web or hybrid, but native mobile apps while using the development language that they already know and already love. Now, I think the easiest way to explain what long range is is by taking a look at some sample applications in real time. So how about we do that right now? So hopefully everybody can see my iPad screen here. Um, what I'm walking through right now is a shipped example that comes with the long range application that's that you can download for free off of uh, the Android Google Play Store or from Apple's App Store. And there's a few different applications in here that you can view. Uh, there's a human resources application. That's the app that I'm going to walk through right now. There's also a section called programming examples that has over a hundred different examples of types of functionality you may want to embed into your application. And more importantly, it also has the source code behind it. This is where Tom's going to spend a majority of his time today. I'm just going to walk through a sample application called Human Resources that demonstrates all the different types of you know, interactions you can have with a mobile device. So here are the four different applications that are available under the Human Resources. We have Employees, Incidents, Assets, and Configure. We're just going to focus on the top three today. So why don't we start off by looking at the Employees application. The employees app just uh, displays to us a list of all the employees. We have the option to sort by name. So for example, when I touch on the letter C, uh, it displays all the employees that start with the letter C. If you focus over on the right hand side of the screen, there's, you'll see there's a little icon that allows us to perform actions. In this case, we can call a bunch of different numbers, text this person, email them, or show their details. If I touch show details or just touch the main item here, it takes them to the same place and that is the details for the particular employee. Hopefully you've noticed the interface has changed. The list of employees now is a scrollable object here on the left. Uh, and on the right hand side we have the employees de employee details. Um, a few things to note, there's some integration points here with the device. So for example, if I touch on the telephone that allows me to either call or send a text message to that particular employee. Obviously, I can't call this person, but if I touch on the SMS button, it enables me to send a text message directly to that person using the native text messaging application built in to the operating system. Other examples of integrating with the device, if I scroll down here, you can see there's a notes and images section to this application. These are pre-built components that are freely available within long range. You can add them to your application quite easily. Tom's going to cover this when he gets to his part of the demo. But uh, for example, if I touch on this notes icon, it allows me to add a note to this particular record back in my database. Very simple to implement, no, no coding involved. Same with the adding a photo. So if I touch on the camera, this allows me to take advantage of the camera built into the device. So you can see the icon that says touch to attach photo. I have a couple different ways in which I can um, attach a photo. If you look at the lower left hand corner, it says take new or grab a photo out of the gallery. We'll touch on the take new button. This brings up the camera. Uh, this is my desk. Let's say I want to take, take a picture of this uh, Lancer Ramp boxing glove. I can just take a photo of that. And once we're done, we hit use photo and it'll bring it back. Another great feature that's built into Long Range, again, because this is a native app, the ability to annotate a photo that I've just taken. So for example, if I touch on the annotate button, I'm able to draw on this 
photo just using the, my finger on the screen. So I can draw, I can change the color of the of the brush, I can change the size of the brush by moving the scroll thing, and again, I can do whatever I want to this image I'd just taken, and once I'm done, satisfied, I, I touch the finish button and hit done, and this then brings the photo back to my application. So I'm going to cancel out of that, no need to save that. Another neat feature within the employee's application can be found here at the bottom, and that's the uh, the uh, signature for the employee. So this is pretty cool. So if I come in here and I use my finger to you know sign my name, and I hit done, I'm going to hit save changes. I just want you to take a look at what happens on the on the left hand side when it comes back from saving that in, uh, that uh, signature up to the server. Again, because this is a native application, it can take multiple photos at once and merge them together. So it actually put the signature on top of that person's photo. Again, another, another nice benefit of native applications versus building just mobile web apps. All right, let me move on to uh, another part of the application. I'm going to hit the navigation button here and it allows me to get back to the main menu structure. Um, let's touch on assets. This is pretty cool. Within the assets application, it allows us to do barcode scanning. So as soon as this loads up, take a look at that. Um, from here, we have the ability to take any barcode, scan it, have that number go back to our RPG programmer uh, and gather all that information and then bring it back to our application. So from here, I'm able to touch the little uh, uh, scan icon in the field and when it is touch it brings up the camera I can now use the camera as a barcode scanner so oddly enough I have a barcode on my computer monitor and as soon as it reads that barcode it sends it back to our RPG program uh, the RPG program does whatever processing next necessary to read data and then it just brings back all the information for this particular asset now one of the benefits of how long range interacts with the camera as it as as a developer, we don't have to understand the underpinnings of how to invoke the camera and how to take a barcode and turn that into a number and get that back to our RPG program. Long range handles all that for us. All we do is call some long range a I APIs that would say, put a barcode scanner on the screen. Again, Tom's going to cover this in his part of the, of the presentation, but it's literally that easy to embed some pretty cool native features into your application without having to really understand the operating system or the underpinnings of how that technology works on all the different devices you'd like to deploy it to. So let me just show you one last program here real quick. We'll go into the incident system. And this incident system is an example of a long range application that allows you to search for, for information and be able to view it and then be able to add additional information and take advantage of native features whenever possible. So for example, uh, we brought up the application. Uh, I had previously done a search for ankles. It remembered that and it's showing me all the incidents where the word ankles in the description. If you look at the left hand side, again, it denotes whether or not there are notes for that particular incident or if there are any photos. And if we touch on one of the incidents, so here we're looking at the, the incident and there are just a few items on here I'd like to, to point out. The first being the ability to email somebody. So for example, if I touch on the email icon, this will launch the native email program for the device, whether it's Apple or Android, and pre-fill whatever information you'd like. Um, again, that's very simple to do, and Tom will show this to you in his part of the presentation. The other part is obviously mapping. As you can see here down at the bottom, you have the ability to work with with the mapping software built into the device, it'll take the address from your, your database and, and plot it accordingly. And then the last, uh, actually there's two more items. Um, if you look here at the bottom, you see that there's tabs. How tabs are implemented are, are quite different. I'll talk about this in, in a little bit later on in the presentation. So depending upon if it's Android or Apple, tabs appear in different spots. But for example, if I look on the bottom here, there's a history tab. If we touch on that, this will allow me to look into the history for this particular incident. And the last part of this application I want to show you is back on the details page. So once we're back here, let's say I make a change to the data. Let's go to the, the phone number and just delete a couple of things, okay? And we'll get out of here and let's say I try to go to a different incident. So I hit the incident button and Long Run says, hey, uh, you've made changes and you haven't saved those changes. What do you want to do? Do you want to save them or discard them? So you got to hit OK. And up on top are the, is the ability to make, 
make changes, save those changes, or discard those changes. And uh, this is really not very hard to do, and Tom's going to get into this when he gets to his part of the presentation. Now, there are many more um, features and native integration points built into these this human resources application. So I, I recommend you come back and, and you take a look at some of these programs. If we go back further a little bit again, what Tom's going to talk about here in a little in a little while is going through a lot of these examples, showing you the source code behind it, walking through the code. It's a great learning exercise, and I implore you to, after the uh, de the presentation today, is, uh, is to download this app onto your device, get this up and running, and take a look at some of these examples. All right, so now that we've seen what a Long Range application looks like, let's take a look at the application architecture of Long Range, starting with its native mobile application framework, which is important because it really reduces the time, the effort, and the skill sets required to build native mobile applications. So the long range framework provides a lot of the plumbing code that developers normally have to build up from scratch before they can start working on the business part of an application. So the framework is essentially broken up into four pieces. There is a section for the navigation portion of your applications, a command bar to place all the actions for the app, like saving and deleting, etc. Uh, there's an area for the title of your application, like to display maybe the product or the customer name that we're working with, as well as a location for some tab sheets. Now, in the middle of the framework, this is where you can snap in uh, our business applications. So, what's so powerful about the framework? is that developers don't have to code for the blue or the green or the purple or, or, the, or the red sections. These parts are automatically generated using Long Range Studio, which we'll discuss here in a few minutes. So instead of wasting time writing plumbing code, developers can focus on writing applications for their business and then run them inside the orange section of the framework. So if you're wondering what style of applications we can build and deploy within that orange section, well, we can deploy uh, and build native applications. And what's great about this is we code them only using our RPG or COBOL skills. There's no HTML, there's no JavaScript, there's no CSS, only RPG or COBOL skills. Now, it's important to understand that when we build native mobile applications with long range, they run as native interfaces, meaning they are rendering the screens using native GUI toolkits for each operating system. The screens are not HTML-based interfaces. But speaking of web pages, you can run existing web apps inside of Long Range as well using our browser plugin. Now, this is significant because if you've already started on the path of writing mobile applications, um, it means you don't have to, to throw these away and rewrite them with Long Range. You just snap them right inside this orange section here. The long range framework also has the ability to synchronize local and remote files and folders between the long range app on our device and the IBM I server. Uh, these would be items like documents and photos, videos, pictures, even audio clips that originated from the device, they can now be synchronized with the IBM I server and vice versa holds true as well, which means items created on the IBM I server can be pushed down to the devices as well. Now the long range framework makes coding mobile applications that need to be able to work offline much easier. Uh, from creating the, the local database to specifying which parts of the application work online, offline, or both. Again, the framework shields us from all these complexities. So Long Range has developed two separate frameworks, one for Apple and one for Android. And the Android version looks like this. It, it is quite different than the Apple version, both aesthetically and in function. As I mentioned before, Long Range uses the native GUI toolkit to build, you know, that's built into the operating system to, to build the screens, to render the screens. So naturally, the Android and Apple versions will look different. The layout's a little bit different, too, because Apple and Android have different interface standards. For example, the title and navigation are swapped with Android, and the tabs now appear on the top instead of the bottom. And then the bottom portion of the screen is dedicated to the application. Even though there are two versions of the framework, it's still only one framework definition and, and one set of source code for us to write. Long range handles all those platform differences for us. Now, another neat feature that long, that long range does in the framework 
handles for us its ability to do this, the ability to handle when the user rotates the device and changes the screen orientation. Now, we don't have to code for this event. It automatically is handled by long range. But if you do want to trap for this event and possibly show or hide uh, sets of information accordingly, long range does allow you to do that as well. Now, another thing the framework allows us to do is run um, on, on a phone as well as a tablet. So again, the framework handles the different form factors for us, and as a developer, it, it doesn't really affect how we code the application, unless, of course, you know, you want to change the interface for different screen, uh, different screen sizes, like uh, a phone versus a tablet. Long range allows us to do so. Now, I do believe Tom's going to show us how uh, long range handles this and how you can check for the device platform and the form factor uh, when he goes into his code review. When it comes to developing long-range applications, there are essentially two different coding styles to choose from. You can code using RPG and DDS, or strictly in RPG using a new long-range service called EZI. For those familiar with traditional 5250 development, you can code long-range applications the same way you do today. You code, your, you code an RPG for the application logic, and you code DDS for the screen layout. For those developers who prefer to write both the application and screen logic in code, well then you can use uh, Long Range's new service called EZI. Uh, EZI in a nutshell provides a set of pre-built user interface panels that are high, highly configurable uh, and you can do that through code. You just set the properties to enable, disable, hide, show certain features or aspects of the interface control. EZI greatly simplifies user interface coding and really eliminates our dependence on DDS. The EZI panels will, will flex and change with the device, device orientation on, on small versus large screens. They'll automatically rearrange one underneath each other instead of side by side. Now besides simplifying UI coding, it also makes integration with device features a lot easier, like taking photos, uh, sending emails, texting, printing, mapping, barcode scanning, uh, driving directions, uh, etc, etc. Next, let's take a look at how a long-range application hangs together. So after users download and install the long-range application on their device, it gets configured to point to our IBMI server. Since you're coding long-range in you know, RPG or COBOL or even CL, your native mobile applications will now have full access to everything on the IBMI, just like the programs we build today. When a user clicks on a menu option, the long range application knows which RPG program to call, and long range then executes it. And I'll show you how that's set up here momentarily. If the long range application was built with DDS, an XML payload is sent back to the device, which is again used to help render the information on that screen. In this case, it's a barcode scanning application that I demonstrated earlier. When the user clicks on the scan button, Long range reads a barcode and then sends that barcoded number back to the RPG program for processing. If the long range application uses easy, uh, easy eye, then there is no DDS to read, and then the XML payload just returns back to the device for rendering. If the long range application is coded to run offline, then all of the offline logic executes locally on the device, reading and writing to a local SQL database. Once you're connected, you can then take care of syncing all the data back up again. All right, so what does long-range development look like? So development is split between two environments. We have long-range studio and whatever your current RPG source editor would happen to be. Long-range studio is where you set up the long-range application framework. So what gets laid out where, that in terms of the, of the title, the tabs, the commands, etc., which RPG programs get called, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now, don't let the studio name fool you. There is no development that goes on inside of Long Range Studio. Long Range Studio is purely point and click, fill in the blank, that there's no coding uh, whatsoever. So in terms of development, we can code long range applications no differently than how we code today. If you're currently coding uh, RPG using Rational, then again, that will continue uh, with long range. If you're currently using PDM and SEU to develop applications today, then you can continue to do so with long range as well. Long range studio doesn't care which source editor you use. The point that I want to make 
clear here is that everything is pretty much the same. How you develop your RPG, how you compile your RPG, how you debug your RPG, nothing really changes. All right, I lied. There is one difference. You will need a device to test your apps on because these are native applications. They're not web pages, so they must be tested on a device. Let me quickly run through Long Range Studio so that I can eventually pass control over to Tom to go through the good stuff, through the development stuff. So we're looking at the menu structure inside of Long Range Studio for the demo app that I just uh, showed before. Let's see how you set up the framework in terms of a long range of mobile application. So here we define the application and its description appears here in the application. All of the menu items for the program then appear here as well. So let's go a, a level deeper and then take a look at the human resources application. So looking at our human resources app, we've defined four applications under the HR menu and this is how they then appear in the, inside the long range framework. Next, let's click on the incident application to see how that is set up. So here is where, where we provide all of the information about the incident app. Uh, and how that gets translated to our application is as follows. So the image that we select from the icon picker is displayed here, the title here, and the description here. As you can see, there's no coding involved. It's all point and click. It's all fill in the blank. Now underneath that area is where you define which program gets called and if you'd like to pass any kind of values to the application, that would be the, the action field here. The program that we've nominated runs inside the snap-in section of the framework. And really, that's about it for Long Range Studio. At this point in time, I want to pass control over to Tom so he can walk through some code examples and then dive into the anatomy of a Long Range application. So Tom, over to you. All right, thanks, Dave. Hopefully, everyone can see my iPad screen. And I'm going to launch the Long Range application by touching on the Long Range icon. Now, one of the reasons developers find Long Range so productive and easy to pick up is because of the 200 plus pro programming examples provided with Long Range. Now, our customers have been able to use these examples as the basis for their development, slightly modifying them to suit their application. Now, over the next 10 to 15 minutes, I'm going to show you some of these examples to help you understand the anatomy of a Long Range RPG program, as well as view some of the controls and functionality av available to you in Long Range. Now, as Dave mentioned, there are, uh, there are a few ways you can go about programming long-range applications. And we're going to start with the more traditional approach using DDS, and then we'll, we'll transition over to the EZI technique later. So let's begin with an introductory example, Hello World. Okay, let's start by running the example. When I type something into the text box and hit the Return button or Submit button, the program will echo back exactly what I've typed in the line below it. Now for each of these examples, if I touch the button in the upper right hand corner, I can view the RPG or DDS, or as you can see here, uh, COBOL or CL equivalent for the actual program. Now let's start with the DDS for this program. Following my mouse, first we have, we have the uh, display size followed by the definition of the record format, in this case named form view. This is a name that's used consistently throughout these examples, however you can use any name that you like. On the next line, we have a string, which is positioned in row one and column one. On the next line, which is row two, column one, we have an input box called enter text. Now long range automatically will convert your input boxes into text boxes on the device for you. Now right below that, you'll see that we're using the HTML keyword. It's important to understand that we're not actually rendering any HTML, but we are repurposing this keyword to extend the uh, the control enter text. In this case, we're setting two properties: show clear button and on return key. Now, some properties you might be might be more familiar with are things like font size, color, or type. On the next row, we have an output field called uh, called echo text. Now, long range again will automatically convert this output field to a label. And finally at the bottom is, is a layout marker. Now this layout marker is simply saying that the first column should fill the entire width of the device. Now what's cool is all these examples actually have extended help. So if you need to get more information as you're looking through these examples, you can find it here. So let's take a look at these two properties, show clear button and on return key. 
show a clear button, when I type into this field, you'll see to the right that a gray circle with an X comes through it. When I touch that, it, it'll clear the field. By simply setting that property, long range adds that functionality to this text box. Now when I type something in and hit the return key on the keyboard right here, you'll see that it'll echo back to me exactly what I've typed. Let's take a look at the RPG. And while this might be a simple example, the structure of this program is consistent and standard throughout the other examples you'll see in the shipped application. So starting in the H spec, you'll see that we're binding to something called LRNG SRV. Now that's what makes this RPG program a long range specific RPG program, gives you access to all the long range APIs. Below that, we just have your, your standard file and field definitions. And below that, we have uh, we, have, we have a couple uh, long-range in include files. This, again, extends this RPG program and makes it a long-range RPG program. Right here, you'll see this example is using RPG Free. As I mentioned earlier, if you're not familiar with RPG Free, you're free to use any of the other uh, RPG versions that are out there. Okay, moving down to the main line. You'll see the first we have a loop and each iteration of this loop handles one request from the long range client and it, it produces a response. Now the loop makes your current program retain control of execution and it only yields control back to long range runtime when the requested program is not the current program as you can see within this do while loop. Now within the loop, within the loop we call two subroutines. Uh, handle requested action, and then we uh, the display form view. So let's take a look at those subroutines. Starting with the handle requested action, the first line you'll see here, demo show code. This isn't something that you're going to typically have in any of your programs, but it's what allows you to view the source code from these examples. Now below that, we have a select case statement and we're gonna be interrogating the value of request action. So for each loop, a requested action gets passed into this program. For example, whenever you press the submit button or the return key, the requested action passed to this program is submit. So this allows us to control what we wanna do within the program. In this case, we'll first uh, in interrogate the value of enter text. As long as it's not equal to blank, we'll echo back what they've typed else we'll say you didn't type anything in. Falling down to the other uh, case, this is this is where we'll, we'll hit this handle the, the default action. And in this case, we're not gonna do anything special, but in, in the later examples, you'll see, uh, you'll see us extend that as well. Now, scrolling down to the display form view subroutine, this is a very standard looking subroutine uh, that you'll see again throughout all the examples. And all this, uh, all, the, all this does is it, it, it runs a command called lrng underscore send, which sends, sends the, the screen details out. It then executes the record format and it receives the details back. After that, we then get the next requested action and program control goes back to the loop and we return out of the program. Okay, moving on from this example, let's take a look at another intro example, dropdowns. Uh, running the example, you see we have two dropdowns, each with multiple items within it. So let's, uh, let's start by looking at the DDS for this screen. Scrolling past the extended help, you'll see that the layout of this screen is very similar to the past example. Starting with the label, uh, we have on row one, column one, we have a label that says sex. Now, on row one, column two, we have an input output field. This is the actual dropdown. And all we have to do to convert that input output field to a dropdown is specify the property type. By saying type equals dropdown, it converts that text box to a dropdown. Now, for this dropdown, we have a couple of hard coded values and those are specified here. Let's scroll down a little bit to country. We have a label 
on, on the second row, first column. Below that, we have another drop down uh, on the second row, second column. Notice here we don't have any hard coded values. Uh, that's because within the RPG, we will populate it. Now, here again, looking at the layout markers, you'll see that we specified that the second column should always use 50% of the width of the device. Going back to the example, if I rotate my screen, you'll see that the drop down will always be taking up 50% of the width of the device. Looking at the RPG for this example, uh, the top is very similar again to what we've seen uh, with, with the the addition of a file called countries, which is defined. We have the same loop and a little bit different handle requested action. And let's go down to where we get to some differences here, which is highlighted in the yellow. Now, what we're doing here is we're populating the country drop dropdown, because if you remember, the sex dropdown is using a static list of values in this case, we're going to be reading from a file, which is we're doing right here, where we say read country records. Do while, not end a file of countries. And the most important thing to get out of this is we are dynamically setting the value property to the country value field. We're also dynamically assigning another property called text. So this is the, the text property is what they'll see in the dropdown. Uh, down to the end here, we're going to set some, some default values. Sex is equal to no, which is male, and country is equal to USA. Let's move on to the next example. Let's pick dates and times. Okay, running the example, see that we have three columns and multiple rows. And if I touch into one of these fields, you'll see that a calendar control pops up. If I press this button here to use calendar style picker, you'll see that we actually can control which type of calendar that they see. Um, you have the option of including the time as well uh, in, in the calendar control or not. Let's take a look at the DDS for the screen. And you'll see that the layout of it is very similar to what we've seen. We have multiple controls in the screen that are set to be in a certain row and column. For example, this is set in row one, column one, row two, column one, and so on. Now the most important thing that I want you to take away from this example is all you have to do to convert a field into a date field is to specify the type. All you have to do to convert a field to a date time field is specify the type of date time. All of these controls have, have their own specific properties you have to learn, which are all of, uh, available to you in our online documentation. So the real magic here lies within the DDS. So I'm not going to spend time looking at the RPG because it's very similar to exactly what we've seen so far. But moving on to the next example, let's look at this one called keyboard data types. Uh, sometimes entering data on a, on a tablet can be, uh, can be painful for your users. And this is one example that makes it a lot easier. So starting with the first field, this is just a standard alpha field. So when the user touches in that field, uh, what we display to them is, is the alpha keyboard. Now going to the zip field, which is a number field, you'll see that we display the, the numeric keyboard with the numbers at the top. And going down to the contact field, you'll see that we have uh, the email keyboard. And it's an email keyboard because we have the at sign, a dash, and an underscore, which are symbols that are used frequently in email addresses. Okay, so this is really all controlled via the DDS. So let's take a look at that DDS. Again, very standard and similar to what we've seen. Um, the one thing I want to point out here is this property called data type. By simply specifying that property, unspecified number, email, etc., long range Will, uh, will automatically display the correct keyboard. Now, it's really important to know that you don't have to understand the underpinnings of how to, to develop that on the device. It's simply just a matter of setting a property. Moving on, we're gonna 
skip past the RPG for this program because it's very similar to the previous examples we've taken a look at. But let's go to our first ex advanced example um, called Unsaved Changes. Okay, looking at this example, uh, if I make any modifications to any of the fields on this screen, including the checkbox, and try to navigate to anywhere else in the application, so choosing one of the other advanced examples, you'll see that a message box displays letting the user know that they have to save or cancel the changes. Now you might be thinking to yourself that this is a lot of code uh, to make this functionality possible. However, taking a look at the RPG here, you see that it's quite simple. And I'm going to scroll down towards the bottom here to a subroutine called get form changed. Now every form has a property called any data modification, which returns true or false, which, which listens for changes to any of the controls on a screen. All we have to do is, is call that subroutine when we, uh, when, when, we, when we display the form to see if it's true or false and long range handles the rest. Moving on, as you can see from the list of advanced examples, there's many, uh, uh, there's, there's many examples for you to look at, including working with tables, viewing images, and you know I could spend all day talking to you about this, but uh, we're gonna move on from here to, to the use case examples. The first use case example I'd like to show you is current location. This example uses the GPS on the, on the device to get your current location, uh, and it, it'll display it at the top. So if I hit the refresh button, you'll see there's a location of our office and the map displays exactly where we are. Now there's a couple different ways you can go about uh, writing this example. And the first one is working with the DDS. And let's scroll down to the bottom and you'll see to get the map to display, all we've done here is on the last row, we've specified an element of type map. Now I very well could have used straight RPG using the long range mapping APIs, which if you want to learn more about that, you can always run this example uh, and, and view the RPG code right from here. The next example I want to show you is very similar. Uh, it's called location pins. As you can see in this example, you have the ability to drop multiple pins on a map. And if I touch in any of those, you'll see that it will display the details of what's underneath the pin. The code for this program is actually very similar to the previous one. However, it's all being done via RPG. If you want to take a look at the RPG code, come back to this example and touch this button and view the RPG. The next example I want to show you is called Mobile Device Details. Uh, as, as an RPG developer, it's sometimes important to be able to figure out what device your, your users are actually running. As you can see in this example, I'm using an iPad. It's a large iPad, not a mini, or it's not, an, it's not a small phone. And you can see that I'm looking at this in, in, in landscape mode and not portrait. Like all the other examples, if you want to view the RPG code or DDS, just hit the button in the upper right hand corner. Now building upon this example, let's look at form orientation and size. You can see here, you can actually dynamically interrogate the orientation, the size, and the height whenever the user decides uh, to change the orientation of the, of the device. Moving on, uh, let's take a look at scanning barcodes. There are, uh, there, there are two ways you can actually scan barcodes. You can scan a single barcode at a time, or you can scan a list of multiple barcodes. And the difference you can see here in the DDS, which of course all these properties that we see here could be specified in the RPG as well. So to tell long range you want to make a field a barcode field, all you do is specify the type as barcode. Uh, thinking back to the example, there were two, two barcode fields. One allowed multiple entries, which is a property here we specified as no, and one allowed multiple entries, which is specified as yes. The rest of the properties allow you to uh, uh, set which types of barcodes you want to accept with the yes or no flag. Now, as an RPG developer, you don't have to understand all the underpinnings that are required to convert a field into a barcode to turn the camera on. Uh, long range handles all that for you. The last example I want to show you is capturing signatures. 
which is right here. Just like Dave showed you in the Human Resources application, here we can capture uh, a, a customer signature. And if you want to come back at a later time and view the RPG for how this code, uh, this example works, view it here. Moving on, uh, you can see that there's a whole bunch of use case examples here. Everything from working with PDFs, working, uh, recording videos, annotating photos, sending emails from the server from the client. And again, I could spend all day talking to you about this. But we're going to move on uh, to the next set of examples called EZI examples. As Dave mentioned, EZI is the preferred way to develop long-range applications. It provides you with a lot of functionality out of the box, and there's less RPG code and no DDS involved. Let's start at the top with Quick Panels 1. This is a simple panel with data. Uh, one of the cool things about these panels is you have the ability to share this information by touching the icon in the upper right-hand corner. For example, if I touch the mail icon, it'll take all the data that's in that panel and it'll drop it into an email. And we'll take a look at the RPG now for how all of this works. Now these EZI examples are bound to the same LRNG SRV. The first difference you'll see here is that we're also binding to EZI service and we're including an uh, uh, include file called EZI service. Now in the D specs is where you specify and define what you want to have on the screen. Here we're saying we want to have a panel and six labels on the screen. From there, it's just a matter of specifying the properties for each of these controls that you specified on the screen. So let me scroll down to the EZI definition. So starting at the top, we have the label of the name field, full name, and we have the initial value that we want to put in there. In this example, uh, the, the, the data is hard-coded. In a real-life real example, you'd have uh, a, a chain or a read to get this data. Um, moving down, again, we're setting the label of the address field and so on, all the way down towards the bottom where we're, where we're specifying the panel. Now, in this, uh, in this line here where it says panel one dot title, we're specifying the title that appears in the upper left. And what I showed you before, when I touched in the upper right-hand corner that icon, simply by specifying this property, sharing enabled, it allows you to take the data from a panel, send it to an email, text message, copy it to a clipboard, or print it. And finally, what we have here at the bottom is a definition of the EZI panel. How, uh, how these are displayed in the screen is simply the order that you've defined them, from top to bottom, down to the panel. Let's move on to a bit more of an advanced example, which is called Quick Panels 3. This example really starts to show the power of EZI, combining all the different elements into a single example. At the top here, we have some labels. Below that, we have a, a text box. And we're actually using what Dave showed you earlier, the, the, the notes element, as well as capturing photos. Uh, next to the phone number field, we have an icon that one pressed allows you to call that phone number or send it a text message. Below that, we have an email icon, and when I touch on that, it takes the email address and it drops it right into an email. Moving down, we have photos, uh, example of changing the color of text, and we have a calendar, and at the bottom here, we have a dropdown. This panel also allows for multiple styles, and if I touch the change style button in the upper right hand corner, I'll kind of cycle through them and you'll see the styles changing. So if you prefer one way or another, it's just a matter of setting a simple property of the panel. Let me show you the RPG for this example and why this one's a little bit different than the past example. Starting at the top, we have our two bindings as well as the include. And where it starts to get different is the definition of the panel and its content. At the top, we have the definition of the panel and three labels. Uh, following that, we have a definition of a text box um, and a drop down and date time and etc. So, in order to make a field into something different, all you have to do is specify its type, and the long range EZI framework automatically will convert that to what you specified. Scrolling down, you'll see right here is a call to an EZI API called EZI is large device, and we're setting the style accordingly. So, if it's a large device, it's one style. Otherwise, it's a different style. Scrolling down a bit further, let's go down to the definition of the panel content. Actually, let's go to the definition of the panel. 
Now this section here is very similar to what we saw in the last example, except we're setting different properties for the different types of fields we have in the screen. So right here, we're saying that the panel is on row one, column one, the title is details, etc. Here's where we're specifying the style. So we're able to cycle through the different styles and if sharing is enabled. Uh, for the sharing, we have some different properties we can set to send an email to who, uh, whomever you choose uh, or to whatever phone number you choose. Now let's scroll down a little more here. And we have the definition of the name and what the label is. And we're telling it, uh, we're, we're saying we want the name field to be placed on the panel. We're setting the address field, we're saying the address field should be on the panel, and so on. Now where it starts to get a little bit different here is now where we get to the zip code field. All right. It's very similar to what we've seen, however we're setting different properties because it's a, uh, it's, it's a zip code field, which is a, a numeric field, so we're saying max integer fields, integer digits is 6. Do you want to allow a sign, positive or negative? We're going to say false for that because it's a zip code field. Below that, we're setting up some properties for the notes. If these are these are some, some pre-filled notes that might uh, uh, allow your users to rapidly enter notes, reduce keystrokes. Down from there, we have the images. And right here is, is a cool one, the phone. If you remember in the example, I touched on the, uh, the phone icon and I was able to send a, a, a phone call or, or a text message right from there. With EZI, all you have to do to make that possible is set a simple property of phone enabled. Moving down here, right? look at email. I set a property called email enabled, set that to true. That now allows me to send uh, an email just from a single line of code. The rest of this is uh, our, our properties related to the element type, like a dropdown, date time, etc. The next bit is to load the panel and its fields with content. So scrolling down here, again, these are hard-coded values like the last example. In your application, this would be replaced with a chain, or instead of being the hard-coded examples, these would be your, uh, your, your, your field names. So let's move on from here, and let's move on to the next example I want to show you, which is quick tables. So this is another example of an easy eye control, which is a table, and let's take a look at the RPG for this example. So the cool thing about this example is it really shows that all we have to do to get a table on a screen is define it as an easy I table. We then define its four columns and scrolling down just like the other examples, all we do is set properties for those controls. Let's take a look at another easy I quick table example. Let's go to quick tables three. This example here is showing multiple tables on a screen, some having images, but the biggest difference is how the data is presented going from left to right as opposed to with columns. So let's quickly take a look at the property that controls this. And again, everything with EZI is done in the RPG because there is no DDS. And I'm going to scroll down to the bottom and I'm going to look for a property. If look for my mouse here. Uh, table one dot vertical layout equals true. By setting that property, the EZI framework automatically adjusts the table and handles the complexity of, of displaying the screen in a different format. The last EZI example I want to show you is quick folders. So let me bring that up. The EZI control quick folders allows you to define a panel once or multiple panels once and lay those out however you want them to be on a screen. So here we have multiple panels, customer, order, bank, etc. And if I touch the change layout button, so you can see here the panels are now presented along the left. And if I press the change layout button again, you can see here that the panels are now presented in an expandable and contractable menu. Now the RPG for this example is very similar to what we've seen in the previous example, so feel free to come back and check it out at a later time. So hopefully you can now see with the EZI examples how we've taken native mobile application development and made it even easier and quicker by reducing the amount of RPG code and, and reducing the need for DDS. Now one thing that people always ask about during a demo is how do you handle charting? How do you handle dashboards? So what I'm going to show you the last example before we end the demo is an example of a Google chart. Uh, Long Range allows you to easily embed third-party charting controls into your application and if if you want to see how easy this is, come back at a later time and view the RPG from the example. 
Now with all these examples, I know it might be uh, overwhelming to try to figure out where everything is at. So what we actually have for you is an example finder where you can search for any keyword in the program, such as let me find all the examples that use a barcode. And you'll see a list of all the examples that are using barcodes. Now from here, you can view the example. You can send the source code to yourself in an email, uh, or you can run the example as well. Okay, that's it for me. Hopefully everybody found some value out of this. And uh, Dave, back to you. Thanks, Tom. Great job as usual. Um, the last item we need to discuss today before leaving is how to continue your long range education. So now that you've completed the introductory to long range workshop, be sure to check out the rest of the tutorials and workshops as well. All of these sessions as FYI are, are free and you get free use of the long range software while you work on the course material. So the 200 level courses are video tutorials that walk you through you know, just installing long range on your Apple or Android device, your IBM I server, and whatever your developer workstation would be, PC or, or laptop. Uh, to access the course material, just expand one of the sessions. For example, I expanded long range 201. Here's where you'll find the installation videos, as well as some other course uh, materials that are required for this particular session. If we page down to the 300 level courses, which are the hands-on workshops, uh, these are the workshops that walk you through building an application against your DB2 data. Uh, again, you get to see all the information about the session. There's an overview video that explains what you're about to build. And then there's the actual lab course material there as well. Just as an FYI, the code that Tom just reviewed came from the shipped programming examples uh, in Long Range 201. That particular video shows you how to get that shipped demo up and running on your mobile device if you'd like to play around with that application and uh, review some of the code. By the time you finish all of the 300 level workshops, you can have an application that looks like this, reading and writing against your database files on your IBM I server. Again, this is a great opportunity to be able to build some really killer apps and then showcase them around the office, just providing proof that you have the skills to create these native mobile applications that are fully integrated with, with all your core line of business applications. Hey, congratulations everybody for graduating from Long Range 101. At this point in time, we're going to move on to the questions and answer session. Uh, before we do that, I've put a couple URLs up on the screen. You can go to www.longrangemobile.com to learn more about the product and download the free 45-day trial. The second URL is for Long Range University. Just go to www.longrangeuniv.com. Again, we're Go back and continue your education with Long Range. Check out those 200 and 300 level courses. So with that, we'll open up for questions. And we'll